Hey everybody, what's up? It's Fred here. Um, you know, I was just thinking about things while I was working out and some thoughts came to mind about, um, I guess philosophical stuff, but you know, I was thinking about the kind of content that I'm putting out fitness wise and you know, um, everybody puts their own unique spin on stuff, steel mace, whatever, sandbags, kettlebells, but there's a million bazillion of us doing it. Um, everybody looks like a unique snowflake but really at the end of the day we're just one big blizzard uh, white snow um, and you know that's fine that's that's cool we're all doing the same stuff uh, we just have our own unique flair our own visions insights with that that's what makes us who we are um, that's one thing that I keep in mind when I do the podcast is I know that there's a bazillion fitness podcasts out there but uh, what I could offer is something unique from my perspective. And I try my hardest to do things differently. So w one of the things that came up uh, the past week was um, I went to church with some family. And my sister-in-law uh, came up to me afterwards and we talked about what um, the pastor was talking about and during the during the, um, the church uh, goings. And, you know, it was, uh, he, he, he said something like, everybody brings their own unique talents to the table. And this is, this is what it's all about. Um, she, my sister-in-law said, what are your talents? What were you born with? And I said, look, I'm, I'm 49. If I don't know what my talents are by now, uh, I guess I don't have any. Uh, sort of, you know, flicking it off but I took time to think about it and I realized that the one thing about me ever since I was little and this is probably you know with all credit to my parents my parents taught me to be um, a critical thinker and to not follow the herd and my talent was in listening to that listening taking the advice but also um, being able to comprehend what that means, especially when you're young and you want to be a part of a group. You want to be part of, you know, that little nook or that little uh, culture click or whatever. But let me tell you something. Being able to think outside the box, think for myself and not follow the herd has saved me many a times. Uh, I, I could give an example, um, but... Let me just tell you, I, I used to roll with some pretty rough dudes back in the day. Um, and seriously, almost all of them wound up in jail um, or juvie or something like that um, with criminal records. I have not talked to those people since I got out of high school um, because once I got out of high school and I started college, I, I realized I, I can't be with hanging out with criminals anymore that's not the right thing for me but uh anytime shenanigans started i was always quick enough to see it and clever enough to escape it in a way that i was able to protect my you know they, they were still my friends i was stuck see this is the thing that parents they, they tell their kids hey you see kids about to do something stupid just leave them get out of there don't and don't be friends with them anymore but that's hard to do when those are your only friends. So, you know, I tell parents this nowadays is you got to give your kids better advice than that. Tell them to stay away from that garbage. Tell them to get away. But then kind of tell them like, hey, be clever. Be smart. If you see they're about to do something that could get everybody in trouble or whatever, um, you could tell them, hey, don't do that. You know, cops might get involved or whatever. And... Uh, if they don't listen, you did your part, but then cleverly get out of there. Find a way to get out of there without, you know, without uh, making it look like you're leaving your friends. If that's what's worrying you. And I hope you understand what I'm trying to explain here. When you're in that position at, at that age, you're so overwhelmed that you may, even though you were given good advice and you know I better not do what they're doing. I better just get out of here. You don't listen to the voice. 
because that pull to be part of the crowd is so much stronger. And, you know, adults are the same way. You see that in society right now. In the United States, you have people being pulled into this sheep-minded mentality. And you're like, what is wrong with you? Don't you realize you're just part of groupthink? You're not even thinking for yourself. And they almost want to attack you for suggesting that. And, um, you know, it all goes back to your childhood, wanting to be part of the clique, be part of the herd. And, you know, I, this is something that's popped up over and over again with me, on my social media, on, on the podcast and everything. And I got to tell you, you know, um, I've never been good with going with the herd. And, you know, Steel Mace community is still small. It's tight knit. It's actually um, broken up into flow and traditional and and people are, you know, blending it all together. And, it, and it's nice, you know, but let's just imagine if one day everybody in the world was swinging a mace. I probably almost think to myself like, all right, I'm going to go find something else to do now because everybody's doing it. But the thing is, is I don't think everybody's going to wind up doing steel mace. Um, I think a certain group of people are drawn to it. And it's everybody I've talked to, everybody that I connect with, and the reason why I started the podcast to begin with is because I was having great conversations with people that I realized I was kind of like-minded with. And these were all people who were thinking for themselves. Steel mace people, steel clubs, unconventional fitness types. They think for themselves and they don't give a rat's ass what people think about them. You know, I mean, I've had people say, oh, I saw a video of some guy on the beach. You know, not me, somebody else. Saw some guy on the beach working out with a steel mace. And, uh, you know, there's like people like making fun of him. And I'm like, all right. Well, were they all fat eating ice cream and pizza? Because there's a lot to make fun of there. Uh, I said, the guy probably looked good. He's probably ripped. He's probably lean. Uh, probably moved really well. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, you know, that's true. He was moving pretty well, but it just looked weird. Yeah, it did look weird. It looks weird when the large herd of sheep who are gravitating toward cheese doodles and soda and cigarettes and staying up late watching garbage TV. Yeah, it's weird to those people. But just think about it. The Steel Mace community, um, tight-knit group of friggin' rebels, man. Uh, you know, a fitness... That's a loud truck. Well, you better get that checked out, man. It sounds like he's about to blow up. A fitness group within a fitness group, you know? And then it goes even more... Uh, subdivided uh, again between the different types of things you could do with steel mace so you know I mean these are the things that just go through my mind when I'm working out when I'm just driving long hauls and stuff and I'm always trying to reach out to the fitness community or the steel mace community and uh, bring these these viewpoints together and you know I'm not uh, 100% confident behind anything I say or do uh, I sure do put on a good act though um, I speak confidently because I feel what I'm saying is pretty much on the ball. But I would love to hear from you guys. Am, am I am I uh, whistling the wrong tune here? Am I thinking wrong? Uh, you know, or do you guys see something differently? Um, you know, send me a message or um, you know, shoot your own video and tag me in it, and you know, kind of respond back to what I'm saying. Just looking for a little uh, give and go here as we venture along through what appears to be um, a crazy world, man. A crazy world where people have distorted reality beyond anything that's tolerable. I mean, really, um, you know, not even be able to define what a woman is or, you know, um, creating ridiculous divides between people that shouldn't even be there and all this just wild turmoil and everything and and what appears to be uh, influences that are are how do we say penetrating our 
our normal culture, if that's uh, even a thing, uh, again, you know, I might be whistling the wrong tune here, but the way it's been, like at the 1990s, the 2000s, you know, remember how, how it was back then? Those were some good times. I, things started to get a little weird uh, after 9-11, I guess. The security state started to develop and everybody's, you know, getting tracked and all our data is being stored on us. And of course, here I am putting a video up, saying my name, speaking my thoughts for an entire world, bunch of strangers even. Uh, this is going to go into some database somewhere forever and ever. And who knows? And, you know, we're all part of it and we all add to the algorithms. And I was having a conversation about the algorithms with a well-known frequent flyer on the podcast, Andrew Emsley, who's AKA at Sleepy Monkey Man. You guys got to know him. He's got the beard, the long hair. He's a really cool dude. Uh, he's my friend. He's from Pennsylvania. We talk a lot. He's super busy now because he's got a good gig where he's uh, taking care of people's health. Uh, you should follow him at Sleepy Monkey, at Sleepy Monkey Man. Um, but I sent him a message the other day about, you know, how the algorithms can drive negativity and, um, and that we need to be um, inputting algorithms to defeat those algorithms. Of course, I'm, I'm not uh, an expert at this stuff. I'm just assuming you could do that. And he says, you know, Fred, good point. Um, if we put in the proper algorithms, the proper attitude, right, uh, we could change all that mess that's on social media. And then it made me realize, well, that's what we're supposed to be doing in real life, you know, like putting uh, the right stuff out into the world, putting the right algorithms, if you want to call them that. But what am I, what am I talking about here? I'm talking about actually um, maybe reaching another level toward enlightenment where instead of waking up in the morning and following negative trends and speaking negatively and um, following the herd, which the herd is absurd. You know, I, that's a, a, a phrase I think I made up. Maybe somebody else made it up, but if nobody did. Then I take credit for it. The herd is absurd. Just remember that. The herd is absurd. They, they go bonkers. And if you follow what they're saying, you follow what they're doing, then everybody's doing what? They're all, they're all doing the weak shit. They're doing the weak shit. Don't be weak. Let's not be weak. Let's be enlightened. Let's, you know, let's think about showing love, compassion. But most of all, we need to be courageous. That is the number one thing I think that we all need. I think this country has been beaten down uh, by fear mongering at least since September 11th. If not before that, maybe, you know, during the Iraq stuff. Uh, but I feel like after September 11th, we've been getting beat down and fear mongered between um, terrorism, you know, and this, we had this war on terror and, you know, what did that look like? You know, what a mess that was. And then of course there was the continuation of the war on drugs. So we're always got, we were always at war with this, um, abstract, we're, we're always at war with an abstraction. They steer us toward a war with an abstraction. You know, you walk out the door and you're like, you're afraid that drugs and terrorism and uh, and nowadays viruses and uh, food shortages and and nuclear threat. It's it's all abstracts. I, I, yeah, I can't talk. I'm starting to run out of uh, steam here. I might have to hang this up pretty soon. Um, it's all an abstraction, and and we're terrified. So we're beaten down into submission with fear, and we're operating from a mindset of fear and weakness. It makes us a weak person, makes us malleable. They can manipulate us and, and people can get what they want out of us because we're operating from an emotional state of fear 
And what you really want to do is operate from like a stoic purity of strength. You want to be so confident that it is pure defiance in the face of their bullshit. And, you know, where do you get your confidence from? Well, you, you got you to gotta go beyond just reading a book. Even if you read the Bible, which is a book, but it's all, I mean, every, oh, there's a lot of good stuff in there. But even that, you still got to go beyond just reading that book. You got to enter into a lifestyle of confidence building. And that means, you know, thinking about the type of people you're around. What are you talking about all the time? This is what I'm talking about, putting um, enlightenment ahead of everything, putting courage ahead of everything. And the algorithms, right? The algorithms of life or whatever we put into social media. What are you talking about with people? Are you talking about negative stuff? Are you talking about your own defeat? Are you talking about your fear? Or are you taking action? Are you talking about and confidently talking about how to handle threats if they should occur? Simple thing, you know, like what do you do if there was a terrorist attack in your town. Well, I run a family, you know, and I have friends which we connect as our tribe. And uh, we, you know, the men talk and they talk about, well, all right, let's crack over the beer and let's just sit here and talk about what ifs and let's uh, make decisions right now, pre, pre action plan. Um, what, what happens if there is a food shortage? What? What do we do if there is um, a hurricane? And because we had one here uh, like ten years ago, or whatever it was, Superstorm Sandy. They didn't even want to call it a hurricane because apparently, if you call it a hurricane, your insurance they they would have to pay more in insurance or whatever. So they call it Superstorm. That way, they they don't have to spend as much money. It's all more scams by by the big wigs. You know, we're we're pretty used to it, and we're, we're so beat down by fear, we don't even want to do nothing about it. But anyhow. I digress. Um, but this storm hit, and I think it was like 14 or 15 days, maybe even longer. We had no power. And it was starting to get really bad. And people were starting to say about the two-week mark, if we don't get power on in like less than a week, I think we're going to go into pure anarchy. Like people are going to be just doing whatever they want to do, and there's going to be mayhem. You could feel it. There was shit starting to go down, fights and stuff, and uh, criminals were starting to operate in the shadows and the darkness, undetected because there's no lights, there's no surveillance, you know. Um, and, you know, the people who were calm and collected and kind of had a pre-action plan, a game plan ahead of time, they, they were fine. You know, they had generators, they had fuel, they had guns, you know. And they just sat in their houses. And if anybody came around, they had a, a flashlight, like one of these high power flashlights and you know, somebody sniffing around their, their premises, hit them with the flashlight. What do you want? I got a gun. Oh shit, I'm out of here. And those people never came back again. And I mean, even if they didn't have a gun, it still worked, right? Just hitting them with the spotlight and saying it. So, you know, um, I'm just talking about being ready for shit, but not in fear. Um, when you have a plan and you're, and you're um, squared away with people communication-wise, everybody knows the plan and everything, you just act, you know? You just act. And, um, you know, this is what we do on the fire department all the time. You know, we talk scenarios. The new guys might have a bunch of questions. You know, we're glad to answer because it gives us time to uh, prepare our thoughts. So we go to work and we talk about fighting fires and we talk about the most common stuff. Then we talk about some crazy stuff just to keep us on our toes and make us think. And, um, but guess what? When something happens, all that talk and practice rehearsing in our brains and running out scenarios, we're, we're not freaking out. You know, professional fire department, we just, we go to work and we take care of it and we mitigate the danger and that's it. And, um, you know, not everybody could be, uh, not everybody's going to be a fireman or a cop or a military person. You know, some people, you might be listening right now, might be just doing whatever you like to do. You could be an accountant, right? And you don't 
really think like from a tactical point of view like that. But you could you could run your household tactically, you know, and strategically. You could think like that. You can get books. You could listen to podcasts. There's all kinds of people that are trying to help people uh, be independent, critical thinkers, and not be so s- ramped up with anxiety and fear so that they can't think for themselves, so they're dependent on somebody else. And I think, you know, um, like going back to see if we could come full circle with this and close this out, um, the fitness industry, fit people in the fitness world, um, steel mace people, like I said, they're sort of like free thinkers, people that think outside the box. They don't care what other people think about them. Uh, I mean, you see some wild dudes with some wild hair, uh, wearing some wild shorts, um, I guess I'm, I fit in the regular guy category. I don't know. I'm just got my shaved head and my hat on and I just swing. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's some wild dudes out there and they don't care. You know, they move elegantly with the steel mace. They'll take a 10 pound mace and they freaking move great, man. And they got, they're lean and they're ripped. And I mean, uh, I'm thinking of a few guys that do excellent steel mace flow and they're, you know, they're ripped, they got abs, and and they friggin' got decent-sized chests, and I'm like, damn, man, that's awesome, and, um, you know, they don't care what people think, you know, um, I work out in a gym, but I also like to work out at home, I just got done working out my driveway, right in front of my house, right in front of the whole neighborhood, and, um, there's people I know that actually question me doing that, they're like, don't you feel embarrassed doing that in front of I'm like, why would I feel embarrassed? I'm doing something awesome with myself. I'm exercising. And I'm hoping I could get my neighbors to come join me and and be part of this, you know? And why would I hide this? Why would I hide this? <laughs> you know, this is awesome. Lifting shit in the, in the street and pushing a homemade uh, sled back and forth and swinging some heavy mace and... Yeah, I play my radio a little too loud, I think. I, when I shut it off, I'm like, ooh, man, that was kind of loud for 10 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. you, you got to figure it, the speakers are just blaring out into this quiet neighborhood. and um, I don't know if people appreciate that or not. If you're, if you're any of my neighbors and you're watching this, sorry about that. You could just come out and let me know, and I'll definitely turn it down. But sometimes I get carried away. So, guys... Um, some free floating thought here, impromptu. Um, I just got done working out and I just felt like my, my mind was ready to flow with some thoughts that I could speak and kind of articulate and make sense. You know, sometimes the brain don't work and it's, it's all like gluey and and gooey and, and I can't get the words out. I think today, I hope I articulated well. And, um, like I said, throw some feedback back my way let me know what you guys think about what i said today once again i'm fred moore and this is the steel mace nation podcast out